Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we are in the Charleston Museum's textile gallery. The museum was founded in 1773, but we didn't begin collecting textiles until the early 20th century. Having said that, we, um, one of our primary collections and, and foremost collections is the quilt collection. And when I first saw your stuff online, I thought, oh, we don't have anything in common with that. This is, <laughs> this is old stuff and his is new. But the more I listened to you and looked at your things, I think there is a lot of connection. I think quilters throughout time have, have tried to, to focus on, on, um, on their, their expression of, of artistic ability. And of course, a long time ago, women didn't have some of the abilities to be artists and, you know, uh, policy makers. And I think they spoke a lot through their quilts. And well, the bulk of the work that I do is heavily inspired by the long tradition and, and history of quilt making and quilts mm -hmm. in general. So even the work that we'll see at the Southern is directly inspired from G's Bend and, mm -hmm. and a lot Absolutely. of stuff that I know you yeah. have in, in your collection here at the Charleston Museum. So I definitely look back into history for oh, stuff I'm working good. on now. Welcome to Down and Dirty at the Southern. It's an exhibition with me and Kevin Earl Taylor. I did the quilts, obviously. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin does the paintings. Kevin and I were both uh, born in Charleston. Um, he grew up oh, here. He was born and raised here. Oh, okay. I was born here, but I grew up in Georgia. Oh, okay. And then uh, Kevin, Kevin was born and raised here, and um, we both now live in San Francisco, and we've been friends for a really long time. Wow. And this was kind of a, a little bit of a homecoming for us. I like to work big. I think you, we talked about the real big one, the 15 foot by 13 foot one. This one's roughly five feet tall by seven feet wide. And it's all done uh, on a machine, uh, machine stitched. And it is technically a quilt, top layer, the batting and the bottom layer. It's all applique. Mm -hmm. And I use a lot of recycled fabrics and donated fabrics. So, you know, um, this, this felt, rainbow felt a friend donated oh, to yeah. me. Um, here's some t-shirts here. It's like a, a Gore t-shirt from the band Gore. Leather from leather jackets and, and other pieces of uh, fabric. Yeah, so you do bring in things from all sources. It's exactly. Not just, yeah, so that's really I, neat. I describe my work in one word. My art is a collision. It's a collision of fine art, craft, and what I would call the fringes of society. And what that refers to is mm -hmm. punk rock, heavy metal, skateboarding, motorcycle clubs, <laughs> paganism, folklore. Right, right. Um, and I take all those and I collide them together in the form of a functional piece of artwork. But one thing too that I thought about yours, and you take t-shirts from Correct. things that are, that are happening now and all. The Tree of Life was an extremely popular motif. But this one, um, down in the bottom, there's a little, where did he go? There's a little giraffe. <laughs> and I thought, why is there a giraffe on a quilt, you know, from England, or from Charleston actually, but the, the chintz is from probably England. And um, it turns out that in the 1820s, I believe it was, the Viceroy of Egypt sent a giraffe to the King of France as a gift. And the giraffe had to travel by raft and by boat and then all the way from Marseille up to the, the palace. And thousands and thousands of people came out to see this giraffe. They've never seen a real giraffe before. And they even printed fabrics kind of commemorating this excitement. And then the giraffe continued to live in Paris, I think for about 18 years or so, and everybody went to visit him. Um, but there were a number of, of chintz prints, and then the, the makers would take those little things and cut them out and reapply them in different things. There's a little pagoda. So a little bit of recycling things. within the fabric. Recycling, but yeah. also kind of, you know, this is what was happening, this is cool. And, and I think that's kind of exciting and fun. I definitely, that's definitely an aspect that I incorporate into the work that I do mm -hmm. for something to be used again and again and again. So, you know, the giraffe was on, uh, you know, a shirt or a, a different piece of fabric. It was used in one capacity and now it's on a quilt. So it has a, a second life in a right, lot of ways. Right. The work that I do, I use a lot of recycled and, and donated fabrics. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if someone were to donate a, a piece of fabric to, to me, a piece of them is now in the work, a piece of That's me right. is in the work, so it's all of ours. It's a collection of memories all sewn together in the form of a functional piece of artwork. So everyone's unexplained stain, <laughs> tear or rip is now on view. Absolutely. And can you kind of see that in, in, in the exhibition you have here? So it, like the piece that had a little bit of damage to it, but I like that quality to it. You know, this is, this was clearly used and you can see the history of the person that had it 
literally the DNA embedded into the mm -hmm. work. For a lot of the quilts that are made at the Charleston Museum and obviously the G's Ben, you know, everyone would come together and make their work and they have like discussions about stuff. It's the same with me, and so I, I get boxes sent to my studio yeah. and it becomes like a dialogue and it's just, you know, building a network and a, building a community. Well, not so much the quilts that are on display right now, but some of our other uh, pieced ones and all, there are little pieces where somebody said, oh, well, that was a piece of Martha Washington's gown, you know, and yeah, that sort of thing yeah. and, and uh, friends garments and various things so it, it's it's a long time tradition to right do that, exactly I, think, and, uh, I, I, I made a piece uh, a few years back that was all from my wife's underwear oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> I asked first <laughs> but then uh, a good friend of ours bought the piece so he's not allowed at the house anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good now, of course, I think everything in this exhibit was done by hand. <laughs> I, I use know you machine. don't do that. I'm impatient. But, you so. know, that's, that's the <laughs> way it is. No, I'm not impatient, yeah. but, I mean, that's the, the times. And as soon as the machine um, did become available, we see some changes in the way things are made. And, and yeah, absolutely. Used. How things and are stitched. A lot of this stuff kind of falls by the wayside, and people do other, other kinds of of crafts and things. For me, using the machine allows me to work a little bit faster and also yeah. I can work much larger. And also quilting through, hand quilting through t-shirt material and, would be and, not fun. And leather <laughs> and like, you know, That's I want right. to use my fingers. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's Destroy astounding that when we look at some of these early ones and see the fineness of the quilting stitches, I have no idea how they accomplish that. This white work piece, I mean, that's all done by hand. See, I just see patience. That just see, it's, that's just patience. Right? It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. And, and then, dedication. And that stuff from behind again, too, to give it that dimension. So really pretty cool technique, and I'm awed by their skill. That's a really nice piece. I think it's a pillow sham, and we do have several uh, complete coverlets, but maybe not quite that detailed. Pretty neat. About and the fact that it's all white, so. too. It's like yeah. super clean. Well, and, and you know, design. during the, the early 18th century, mm, wrong one, 19th century, the white work was extremely popular. That kind of neoclassical, everything mm -hmm. was just very pale and lovely. And I think <laughs> they, um, they went for that sort of thing. We've got several in the collection that reflect that same aesthetic. <laughs> um, based on the things you saw today at the museum, is there anything that you think is going to you know, take your work a different direction or besides the little giraffe? The size of the giraffe. I like the, like the giraffe. The giraffe was good, but also uh, we, the piece we were talking about that was draped over the chair. I really liked how that particular quilt was presented. Uh, I thought that was really interesting, and, and it kind of created a different way for the viewer to experience that piece. It kind of showed more of the functionality aspect to it as opposed to hanging just as a straight tapestry which I, I thought was really interesting. That will probably show up at some point, but also borders and a lot of the detail for some like the Tree of Life quilts had a lot of different detail in there and stuff kind of hanging down and I thought that was really interesting. And that was, you know, those types of quilts, the Monument to Thieves piece was clearly influenced by, by that kind of design for those, for those particular pieces that were at the Charleston Museum. And for right now I see more stuff kind of probably melding, going more in that particular direction because I like to work big, but the stuff has gotten a little bit more detailed too and just seeing a lot of the little tiny handiwork has kind of been showing up more within my work and that's from seeing pieces that like you guys have at the museum um, is a direct link to what I'm, what I'm inspired uh, today with. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for well, having It was a pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed seeing stuff at the museum, yeah, and no, thank you for having me over. Oh, I'm so glad you could come. It's fun that there's a, you know, a contemporary cultures exhibition and locally. You know, Quilt rivals. <laughs> well, it's always really fun to pair historical pieces with contemporary and like, you know, talk about how things have changed.